what, what kind of people reached out to you in uh, in support of you putting them paws on Charleston White? <laughs> Bruh, they had any type of street in them, any type of hood in them, they was hitting me up, bro. And I'm still proud to say a lot of people from where I'm from, I see the late Charles was upset with me because I didn't actually fight him. And the way they ended this situation, the way that the situation was put to a halt, it looked as if I took three L's. It looked as if I took three losses because the way the things were portrayed to the public. It's not my fault that the people who I signed these contracts with didn't hold up to the end of the bargain. Now, I have been holding up to the end of the bargain because I have not yet released any of the paperwork that was signed. I have not re yet released any of these text messages that I have between me and certain individuals. Once I am able to do those things, I'm really thinking there'll be a table of turns, a, a turn of table for me. So, so, so there is some untold truths that haven't been told yet about the situation. The White is one of the most greatest Instagram comedians, greatest Instagram actors there is. People remember, people forget that everything he say, everything he say, may or may not be true. <laughs> Okay, so let's move forward, man. Uh, when Charleston White, when Charleston White maced you, some people say it was capped to go viral because he say seemed, uh, it seemed like no one else was affected in the room. Um, no one else seemed to be affected by the mace. Was it staged, or or can we speak on that? Uh, according to the contract that I am under, I can tell you that it was real mace. I, I, I know for a fact that Charleston keeps real mace because I've seen his mace gun when he came in here and did some interviews. He he, he always has it readily available. Uh, uh, he has the uh, spec, he has the specifications of his mace gun that he knows by heart. It shoots a two a twenty foot stream of gel. It's like jet fuel, you know. <laughs> so for a fact, he practiced. He practiced. <laughs> no, no, he, he you know the the, the way. Uh, he is so good with that mace, man. I'm talking about, bro. It's just like second nature. And uh, you know, uh, it was, it was, it was. We got target set up. Yes. So, okay. What, what, what led you to push him in the first place? Um, as a contender, and I actually do influence the boxing. Per and I, I didn't. I don't know if I mentioned it. I this would have been my second fight. I actually have had a crossover fight. You know, uh, that's the technical terms that they're using now for. For this, it's not influencer fighting now. It's crossover fighting, uh, which means it's um, ex athletes such any kind, any type of contender that wants to get in the ring that has some type of value, they can get in there and uh, build it, build themselves. So um, it's a it's a league so that you can get a belt through. The a lot of those guys got belts, and uh, this was my second fight. So um, my first one ended in a draw. So I, I knew I was going to be Charleston. So I wanted to come off a little. My, I wanted my character to come off just a little bit aggressive. Respectfully, respectfully. Uh, if the fight had went down, what do you think would have happened in that ring with you? Pure punishment. Pure, pure punishment. He was. I was going to try to knock him out the ring. <laughs> no love loss. I told him we still got to fight regardless of what happens. He owe you one. He owe me one. He gonna have to get. He gonna. Have, he gonna have to get it live, man. Um, he, got, he, he got to give me one. They. We were supposed to, according to the plans, we were supposed to take the the, the fight to the gym and spar. Okay. Spar after the situation, but Charles, Mr. Charleston stood us up. <laughs> 